a direct hit in Kiev as Russian attacks intensify from land and air. But Vladimir Putin's invasion isn't going to plan, and for that, the world owes a great debt to the heroic Ukrainian people. I think Putin got a lot more than he bargained for. He's in a very difficult position. Yes, Russian forces have made some gains, but it's been a slow process. Here, footage of what appears to be a drone strike on a Russian position. In the meantime, satellite images show a large deployment of Russian troops near the capital. Well, to be honest, we doesn't have 100% control, but because we build this uh, territorial defense in a very you know, short period of time, but it's patriotic. Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, has set an example to global leaders as he rallies his country and the world to resist the invasion. And his pleas on behalf of Europe's principles have helped to persuade European leaders that Ukraine's fight is also theirs. But he does remain sceptical over what can be achieved from talks with Russian officials. Let them try so that not a single citizen of Ukraine has any doubt left that I, as president, used every chance to stop the war, even a small one. As is always the case in war, the state of the battlefield is confusing. But the main development so far is the success of the Ukrainian resistance against fearsome odds. The Russians are not going to give up. Putin has been consistent over 20 years that he wants to take over this country and destroy it. So much for the quick Russian march to Kiev, followed by a frightened surrender and the installation of a puppet government. Everyone is doing what they can and what they know how to. Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, Ukrainians over the past few years found themselves in a situation when they had to fight for their freedom. But Ukraine shouldn't have to fight urban battles with homemade bombs. Fortunately, Europe and the US are finally sending the weapons needed that should have been provided long ago. Uh, when the flood is, is lapping at your windows, it, it's too late to go fill sandbags. Europe, the US and Japan have also stepped up tougher sanctions. That includes banning select Russian banks from the SWIFT financial clearinghouse, though it looks like it will still exempt energy transactions. Such is their reliance on Russia for energy. Right now, Ukraine's position still remains perilous. Show this to Putin the eyes of this child, and crying doctors. Over the weekend, Mr. Putin put his nuclear forces on high alert in response to what he called threatening comments from NATO leaders. But no one is threatening Russia. There's also a concern that Mr. Putin could launch chemical weapons. Certainly uh, nothing is off the table with this guy. He's willing to use whatever tools he can to uh, intimidate Ukrainians and, and the world. It's tempting to dismiss Mr. Putin's comments as talk, only the Russians' public statements have become uncharacteristically extreme. Well, I met with him many times, uh, and uh, this is a different Putin. Uh, he was always calculating and cold, but uh, this is different. He seems uh, erratic. He's descending into something that I personally haven't seen before. Fox News reports that just a month ago, Russia signed a statement which in part reads, we affirm that a nuclear war cannot be won and must never be fought. This is really a pattern that we've seen from President Putin through the course of this conflict, which is uh, manufacturing threats that don't exist in order to justify further aggression. And the global community and the American people should look at it through that prism. Mr. Putin is trying to restore greater Russia and make himself the dominant European state and a global power. He wants a new world disorder. If Mr. Putin was to succeed in Ukraine, breaking NATO will be his next ambition. The people of Ukraine are showing a too complacent West what it means to fight for freedom.